sorry I forgot to bring my external mic, but we're in California to do taxes, renew our six month Mexican visitors permit, and of course visit friends and family. A lot has happened though since my last video till now, so let me bring you up to date. Once we moved La Brisa from the Foniture Marina in Wymus over to El Mero, or the almost free docks, life settled into a rhythm. First thing in the morning, Blondie and I would walk up the hill to overlook the shipping channel, Sardine Cannery, and Isla Pajaros in the distance. The indiscriminate dumping of trash detracts from this beautiful spot. However, there is a narrow rocky trail that continues on and beauty reigns. One can also get cell service. And after checking for messages and the weather, Blondie and I would return to La Brisa for coffee, breakfast, and the day's projects. El Mero was originally constructed for the local fishermen, but the distance to local markets was too far and other than the launch ramp, the docks are not used by fishermen. However, the 50 peso daily charge is attractive to cruisers, and these docks are very popular for cruisers that have recently hit the water and are waiting for a weather window to cross to the Baja, or for returning cruisers that are preparing their boats for a stay in the yard. The docks are administered by a branch of the port, APIM, or Administración Portuaria Intrugal Municipal, and since their construction, have seen very little in the way of maintenance. The outermost dock, battered by waves from summer chubascos and hurricanes, is considered unsafe. The dock we were on has a pylon of dubious integrity and on one side a strip of protective planking has come loose exposing bolt ends that could do a number on a hull. On another dock the concrete is disintegrating. But in winter when the northers blow through it provides shelter and other than occasional smells from the cannery over the hill it is a calm, beautiful place. Shortly before our return to the United States, the calm was shattered with the theft of an outboard from Pialani, and a day later, another outboard theft from another boat. These thefts occurred during the night, usually in high wind events while the owners were asleep. In spite of heightened watchfulness on the part of all of us, our friend Guillermo, age 82, awoke on two different occasions to find men on his boat attempting to remove his outboard. On the last occasion, he blasted his horn and shone his spotlight and other boat lights joined in. I heard the engine of a panga start nearby and then speed away. The thieves abandoned their pose of fishermen and left behind a net. At this same time, Sharon and Reggie on pea soup, anchored in front of the Malacom in Wymus, suffered the loss of their dinghy and outboard, even though the dinghy was lifted out of the water and locked to the boat with steel cables. A widespread exodus from El Mero followed, and there were only five sailboats left, two unattended, and three, including us, with owners on board. We helped Guillermo move to our dock so that all five boats were on the same dock, and that night, Lee and I slept in the cockpit. Even though we did not hear or see any pangas, the fishing net Guillermo had confiscated and hidden under the dock was missing in the morning. When we came back to the States, we left La Brisa at the Furniture Marina, thinking she would be safe there. We removed the outboard 
and left it in the cabin. Only day before yesterday, Lee received a call from Sharon on pea soup that an outboard and anchor had been stolen from boats in the marina itself. Yesterday, Donna on Winsong messaged me that it had been a wild night at El Mero with flares being shot off to scare away two men in a small boat. After coming from the safety and security of Gabrielle's yard, the thefts have been a rude shock and violence has continued to increase in Waimas. During our stay at El Mero, headlines on the 18th of March declared, man shot. The following day, human remains found at El Carecito, to be followed the next day with masked assassin, and yet another assassination on the 23rd. While law enforcement attention is focused on this cartel-related violence, Criminals are taking advantage of the lack of scrutiny to carry out these blatant marine thefts. Not all of the thefts are being reported to the authorities due to the language barrier problem and the inconvenience of it. This only exacerbates the problem. Although we love Wymus and its people, it's time for us to leave. Not all the drama took place at night, though. We had a little bit of drama one day, and it revolved around our newly installed inverter. We chose, uh, and we, we decided we needed an inverter. Our boat originally came with no large inverter, and the reason was for this computer here. I used this for editing videos. It's powerful. Uh, it's small, it's portable, it has an HDMI cable, so it enables me to use flat screen TVs as a monitor, and it also operates on 12 volt power, as does our flat screen on the boat. So we thought all that would be great, we wouldn't need an inverter. However, <laughs> when we run our water pump, uh, there is a fluctuation in the power, and as most everyone knows, fluctuation in power and computers don't go very well together. So, we were delighted when Lee found a pure sign inverter available at Amazon for the reasonable price of $250. The inverter was a brand we had never heard of before. But it appeared to have everything we wanted in an inverter. Okay, so you're going to just mount it there on the floor. I don't like know. That. That's what, what I have to determine based on how the wire comes in. Okay. And it wouldn't be on the floor. It would be mounted on this so because we have to be able to lift this up. Oh, right. So, but what about uh, mounting it vertically? Then you don't get to see any of the numbers and, and data comes in off the uh, LCD. Oh, okay. So, so it still has to be mounted up off the floor though. Yeah, and I can do that. I can move the uh, um, circuit breaker that's here over to the side. Mm -hmm. Then lift this up closer to here. Okay. But if the cable came through that already existing hole, then the socket would be it wouldn't be available for a 110 socket but we don't really need that we can put 110 sockets elsewhere no it isn't and this this hole right here is one of it but there's no to add anything else to it it's pretty tight isn't it yeah doesn't mean that it can't be enlarged since it's an existing hole though let's see and then I could go out that hole there with the two uh, DC cables. And that would then allow us to go across the bottom of that thing and, and into the bottom right. It would allow us to go right there underneath the uh, uh -huh. there's a little floorboard there. And then I could come down to there. Lee did a beautiful job running and routing the cables. As an aside, I should mention that Lee worked in many aspects of the computer field, 
and running and routing cables and power is something he has had a lot of experience with. Here he is using the inverter to run the heat gun to apply heat shrink tubing to a crimped cable. The inverter worked like a charm for 26 days. Then one morning, while working on my last video and using the inverter to run my computer and the flat screen, smoke began to billow out from under the nav table. It was very frightening. Initially, we were unable to locate the source of the smoke. Was it coming from wiring? Was the boat smoldering and about to burst into flame? What was it? Lee determined it was the inverter and used a fan to disperse the poisonous fumes. None of the fuses had blown, which should have happened, and the smoke came from within the box itself. That one looks good too? Yep, all the fuses look good, so... Where's the problem? Where's my We are applying for a refund and the 2,000 and 3,000 watt inverters are no longer available on Amazon. In the meantime, we have ordered a Xantrex inverter at two and a half times the cost. This time, we are going with a well-known name. Just a few minutes before the eruption of smoke, we were outside talking with friends we were extremely fortunate we were in the cabin at the time and could jump on the smoke before it became worse. While we are in California, I will try to put together another video. I haven't even talked about our day sales and of course, more projects.